Hello, my name is Mary Davis, one of the vets at Pryor's Farm. Uh, welcome to our equine reproduction series. Um, this is our second lecture and today we're going to talk a little bit about the AI process. So we're going to talk about um, the mare and her oestrus cycle, um, oestrus being the term we use for a mare when she's in season. We're going to talk a little bit about how we monitor that oestrus cycle um, and her progression within um, oestrus. Then we'll talk a little bit about ovulation, how we induce ovulation. Then we'll go through the process of artificial insemination, so the actual process of placing the semen within the uterus. And then we'll talk a little bit about post um, ovulation and post insemination checks. And then finally, uh, briefly touch on pregnancy and pregnancy scanning. So the first um, thing we're going to talk about is um, monitoring the mare's oestrus cycle and establishing that she's in oestrus. And we discussed this or touched upon it a little bit in the last lecture. Um, and what we need to do is, is establish um, when the mare is in season. Um, and there are two, of, two sort of options for this. Firstly, we can watch her on her natural cycle and wait for her to naturally come into season or to come into oestrus. Um, the benefit of this being it's on her natural um, programme, on her natural sort of 21 to 22 day cycle. The disadvantage of this is she can come into season um, on a weekend when it can be difficult for us uh, to get semen. And also we do get some mares that are very quiet, i.e. they don't show that they're in season. Um, so they don't give us any obvious signs that they're in season and they're what we call those quiet mares. So difficult to detect that they're in oestrus. Um, the other option is inducing oestrus. So we use a drug called prostaglandin E and it's a, a drug that we inject the mare with. Um, and typically mares will come into season within... Um, three to five days of that injection. Now, it does depend slightly where they are at in their cycle when we give that, um, administer that drug. Some mares will require more than one injection to short cycle them and bring them into season, but most will respond to a single injection and come into season sort of three to five days later. And then we can plan um, much more when we're going to breed with that mare um, and, and it makes it a little bit more simple in terms of ordering semen in and that arriving during the, the week with post and all the rest of it. Um, so once a mare has come into season, um, we need to closely monitor her through her oestrus because we need to know when um, she is going to ovulate. Remember that in the previous lecture, we talked a little bit about their cycle um, and the fact that oestrus, or when they're in season, lasts between four to seven days. And that mare is going to ovulate one to two days prior to the end of that oestrus. Um, and we need to know when that ovulation is. So we monitor her throughout the, throughout the oestrus cycle. And there's a couple of ways we monitor her. Um, and most of it is done ultrasonographically. So we scan the uterus. What we're looking for is something which we call edema within the uterus. Um, now, edema is fluid within the wall of the uterus that builds as the mare um, comes into season. And then just prior to ovulation, that edema drops off. Um, so when we look at the slide um, that's shown here, you can see that the left-hand image um, shows a nice sort of cut orange segment to it. Um, and we can see that there's fluid within that the wall of that uterus. Now, that mare is clearly in season. The image on the right is a very quiet uterus. Um, there's not much fluid, there's not much edema, so that would be a lower score. What we do is we score the uterus in terms of how much edema there is um, and watch the mare as she develops through her, her cycle and then just prior to ovulation that edema will drop off. The other thing we look for um, on ultrasound is the presence of a dominant follicle. Now that's on the, the ovary, um, we're scanning the ovary and looking for that follicle which is essentially a little fluid filled sac which contains the egg and as the mare um, progresses through oestrus, that um, follicle will grow and grow and grow and become softer and they can reach sort of four to five centimetres in size. And then once they've reached um, that size, they, they wait and then they ovulate the egg 
into the uterus. Um, and that's the point that we really need to know when that's um, happening to time our artificial insemination. The other thing we look at is the cervix. So we visually um, assess and digitally palpate, so feel the cervix. Um, and what we're looking for is a nice pink fleshy cervix that's slightly dilated. Um, and that tells us that the mare is in season and ready for breeding. So the next step is to think about um, inducing ovulation. Um, and typically vets will use a drug called desloelin, which um, when injected into the mare, encourages the mare to ovulate that follicle um, into the uterus um, within 40, most of the time, within 40 hours of injection. And that's when we can think about ordering semen or having our semen ready for when that mare ovulates. Now, the process is slightly different between fresh and frozen semen because with fresh semen, we're going to um, encourage that mare to ovulate. We're going to order the semen in. That semen is going to arrive fresh and then we'll inseminate the mare prior to ovulation so that that semen is sitting within the uterus ready for that egg to be released um, and hopefully to be fertilised. With frozen, you'll remember in the previous lecture, we talked about how once... When we defrost the, the straw, that semen is only going to last for between 6 and 12 hours. So we need to be really precise with our timing. And there's a couple of different approaches to this. We can either watch the mare and scan the mare really frequently. Um, and as soon as she has ovulated, we can inseminate her with the um, defrosted semen. Or we can... Um, split the dose and, and give administer or inseminate um, half the dose prior to ovulation and half the dose post ovulation so that there's a constant flow of semen up in up near the um, near the ovaries um, and that depends a little bit on how much frozen semen you've got and the fertility of um, of the stallion so slight variations in how we approach our frozen mares compared to our fresh mares with the timing of ovulation and, and insemination so now we've got a little video that shows you um, the insemination process and talks you through how we uh, inseminate the mares when we inseminate a mare we've got to be very careful and very clean and very thorough first of all you must very carefully clean off the vulva using water alone. You use water because hippy scrub is actually spermicidal, i.e. it kills sperm. As you'll see, we've put a tail bandage on the mare to make sure that we can hold the tail and no stray hairs get into the area. Once the vulva is clean, we then insert the catheter into the cervix. Once we've inserted the catheter into the cervix, we then need to direct that catheter to the correct horn. A mare's uterus is Y-shaped. They will normally ovulate on one side or the other, either the left or the right. And it's really important that we get the catheter into the correct horn. We then insert a hand into the rectum to allow us to direct that catheter to the correct horn. Once we're happy that the catheter is in the right place, we then inseminate the mare with the semen and carefully withdraw that catheter. And that is it. OK, so now we've performed the um, artificial insemination, uh, we need to start thinking about our next steps. So we need to think about post-insemination um, management. Um, and typically the following day, we'll scan the mares to check that they've ovulated and also to check to see if there's free fluid within the uterus. Now, free fluid within the uterus um, can Im impact uh, whether a pregnancy takes. Um, and so if we see that free fluid within the uterus, we aim to get all of that um, out of the uterus so that we've got a nice environment um, for that fertilised egg to come down and, and, and hopefully hold within the uterus. Um, now, that might seem counterintuitive that we've just put um, the semen into the uterus and now the next day we're flushing it out. But remember that once we put the semen into the uterus, the sperm are actually going to swim up to right next to the ovary and they'll sit there and wait um, for the egg to be ovulated. So they're nicely, nice and safely out the way. What we need to do is make a nice environment for that hopefully fertilised egg to return down into the uterus. And there's a couple of ways um, in which we can manage post-insemination fluid. Uh, one is to think about a drug called 
oxytocin, which essentially encourages the uterus to contract and squeeze out any excess fluid. We might also choose to flush the uterus with some sterile saline, um, which enables us to flush all the debris out, um, which has accumulated um, post-insemination. And for mares that are at risk of um, infection within the uterus, your vet may consider using um, an antimicrobial within the uterus uh, once we've eliminated um, the post-insemination fluid. Okay, so now we've inseminated our mare and we've checked for post-insemination um, complications. We now wait um, for 14 days and perform a pregnancy scan at day uh, 14 to 16. Now, what you can see on the screen here is essentially a day 14 uh, to day 16 pregnancy where you've just got a little fluid-filled vesicle and that's a positive pregnancy diagnosis. Um, now, you, all you can see at that stage is a little fluid-filled sac, so we scan them again at day 28, at which point you can see a little embryo uh, sitting within that vesicle and we can see a heartbeat. So we can not only give you a positive pregnancy scan, but also a positive um, heartbeat scan and check that the pregnancy is progressing as it should do. So that brings us to the end of this lecture on the process of artificial insemination. Um, I hope you can join us for the next lecture where we talk a little bit about managing our pregnant mare um, and then uh, parturition, so birth of the newborn foal. Thank you for listening.